All right, I'm Joey Dussel. That's DJ Moore, and this is two dumbbells and a microphone. Ooh, you introduced it differently this time. A little time. differently, yeah, just for a kick. I wasn't ready for that, man. <laughs> Shoot, that's all right. Keep going. All right, well, here we are, episode nine. What's our topic for today? Derailment. Derailment and derailment prevention. Prevention. Yeah, Sorry. So we yeah. can make sure that you know that's what we're that's what we've been thinking about the things that derail people. Today's episode, we want to be all about preventing that derailment, so that. People who are brave enough and committed enough to getting in to the workouts or the nutrition change or any habit adjustment, they're going to actually be able to stick with those things and make it through. That's right. Derailment is a real issue out there. Yeah. And uh, uh, we have a special insight to this, uh, being coaches and trainers. We get to watch this go down in many clubs that I've been to, many gyms that I've been to, just watch it happen. Yeah. And you wonder why stuff doesn't get done. Well... We've been there, and I've watched several people do it, and I'm just like, wow. Wow, that was a lot of time doing nothing. Right. I wonder what was going on that caused you to stop what you were doing for that long. And I think we've got a list over on our whiteboard over there that will help some of you know these are probably you. And this is what probably happens to you, and here are some things that you can do, hopefully just avoid them altogether. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, we got this topic on our list. And I think, first of all, on those people that I see in the motivational months like January, right, there's these first time or repeat first timers who, for some reason, they fall off. And we get the chance to notice that because we're at the gym every day. So we see them and then we stop seeing them and we can kind of keep track of that. And we know we know who's kind of been able to stick with it. And when people have fallen off, I like to try to collect a little bit of data on why, what happened? Hey, what's been up, man? What's been going on? And these are some of the reasons that we've heard from people already. And so we've, we've actually come up with good solutions and some recommendations from things that have worked for people before. Should we save the, the topic on the right? Let's save that to the end since we didn't introduce that. I just, oh, yeah, I don't want to forget, but there's yeah. something very important. Uh, if you guys wait to the end, I think it's proper for Joey and I to do something here and we'll leave that to the end. Kind of leave them hanging right here. Like, what are you going to talk about? Okay. Okay. I dig it, you know, because I actually think that that is a big part of derailment prevention itself. Ooh, yeah. You know? (laughs) You're right. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, let's go. Let's go for the first one. Uh, This is actually pretty cool because both of us had it written down first independently when we're creating our own lists and we're kind of rehearsing what we want to cover. Uh, we both got this one. So go ahead, hit them, DJ. What's the number one derailment item? I think they already know. And it sucks because a lot of you are going to get stung with this. Yeah. And it's the number one thing I think right now, not just the gym, but life in general, mm-hmm. is your devices. Yep. We're talking, and you know what they are. Your cell phones and or... The TVs that are in every single gym. The TV screens. What's going on? Yeah. Yep. Those are a little, I think, a little more offensive, you know, because the the phone, you're probably listening to that, to us on that right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's that's fair, though. I have an iPad here in front of me. There's a big screen TV on the wall there. So screens can definitely be useful. And of course, yep. you could even have your work out there on an app on your phone, True. right? And so we don't want to say that they're, you know, universally bad, but I know that they can be very, very potent for distracting our workout effort and kind of chipping away at what you're doing while you're in the moment. And then also completely derailing us, getting us onto something else and making us miss a a session completely. Absolutely. Yeah. Things can't be accomplished when we're wasting time. Mm -hmm. I'm not a wise person here. These are not wise words. This is an obvious fact. Right, common sense. It's a common sense moment here. When your time is dedicated to another thing other than the task which you went to go accomplish, you've now wasted your time, and then your results are reflected in this. Mm -hmm. And how frustrated do you get when you say to yourself repeatedly, and this is where I think people lie to themselves, they go, well, I went to the gym. The results aren't happening. I think this happens to quite a few people where it is actually the device. Mm has swayed them into yeah. whatever social media. I've, I've watched this happen mm-hmm. firsthand, so I know this to be true. I'm not just calling people out here. I've seen it happen. Right. So when your results don't happen because of the device, which is taking your time, this is the stuff I want to avoid. Yeah. 
not yeah. not listening to us while you're doing some treadmill work, yeah, or not watching and or watching uh, an ex- instructional video which we put out. Yeah, we yeah, have we have demonstration content. videos. Yeah. We yeah. want you to watch those. Mm-hmm. But it's you know, I mean, isn't it obvious? It's if you're standing there watching at the watching the TV um, with ESPN on, which is in every gym. You know, you're going to see two or three guys just kind of staring at it, seeing what the score of the game is or whatever else is going on in that show. Yeah, I'm, gra- I'm glad you brought that up because, like I mentioned, I think the TV screens, um, you know, bought and paid for by the gym as a perk, you know, to make your membership seem more attractive, those are more offensive than our own personal devices because we have a lifetime of being indoctrinated that what is on a screen is important and we should put our eyes on it even for a moment to to determine what it is and nine times out of ten it's a baseball game replay uh, or it's an advertisement and if you're in the moment of your workout and then suddenly you're shifting into like decoding this message on the tv and seeing if it's interesting and if you need to pay more attention to it that's already starting to splinter your workout effort i have a fix for this yeah. So I just don't want to say don't watch the TV or don't watch your your device. Okay. Okay. So I'm in a I'm in my uh, I'm in the big gym uh, mm. on Sunday. So I go to this gym to work out, and, and okay. it's, it's huge. I don't I don't should I mention the name? Does it even matter? No, nah, we'll keep it okay. relevant. For it doesn't matter where it, I go. Yeah, However, right. they they have large TVs everywhere. Yeah. Like dozen. Yeah. Twelve. Or easily. More. Yeah. Easily. Right. Mm-hmm. So I will watch ESPN from where I'm at. But while I'm watching that, I'm doing all my band work, all my mobility mm. work. Okay. So it's like my, my warm up, right? Mm. So as I'm watching whatever nonsense is scrolling across, I'm just doing, you know, my pull aparts and my band distracted work and right. some tugging and pulling Theater on things. Theater standing, you're yep. just doing some smaller so joints. I'm moving. Yeah. And then when I'm done, well, I'm done watching. Mm. That's it. You can watch it, but don't let it take you away. Do something really while you're watching. Yeah. And that's how you get through it. But I think that's a good way to kind of have mastery of it because we don't want to just say, oh, you know, you're, you're bad if your eyes go up to the TV screen and you get distracted. Instead, yeah, shoot. Yeah, you know, happens. if that happens, do something about it and be doing your band work or your mobility at the same time so you don't feel like you're, you're battling yourself or that you're going without. Yeah. Um, I, I really think, too, that, and, and let's take this one step farther. Wow, this one's going to maybe be longer than we think. They're putting these monitors right on the cardio equipment. It's, it's big, yeah, right on right the on treadmill there. or bike. You right no longer you. have to bring your iPad in. Mm-hmm. You can plug and tune in. And, you know, I've heard this. People go, well, I just put it on so I can zone out. Mm-hmm. And I think, wait, 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 wait. This is not the time to zone out, actually. Mm-hmm. This is the time where you actually you should be engaged with what Definitely. you're doing. Definitely, yeah, we and need so you here now. In it this shows moment. that they need a distraction to get through what they're doing, which means they don't really like it, but they know they got to yeah, do it. Right. This is, by the way, not a good way to go about being healthy. If, if you're constantly needing to be distracted to get it done, you're probably not going to be doing it optimally, I which agree. means you won't yeah. be getting the results you really look for. It, t- it takes longer it's a spiral. to work on it in that method. It does. Yeah, I agree. You'd be much better off going wholeheartedly, and maybe it can compress the effort, You know, get it done in less time, or get more done in the time you have and then get to the place in your fitness and, and in your health that you want to maintain. And then you can go in and do those mindless, you know, distracted workouts when it's keeping you at the point you want to be. If you're not there yet, then I think the, the screens can be detrimental. Yeah. Right. These are also practices that, you know, we have worked on over the years ourselves. Yeah. This is a, uh, it's not like we're immune to this stuff and, yeah. and we yeah. are going to be able to deal with it. But I do want to say one more thing on yeah, the, the devices, and I, I think that this is important because it goes, you know, it's very clear here with the, the electronic devices, but it's also true for um, all of the amenities and the options that are tacked on to your fitness membership. And I think there's actually a paralysis by choice when you have that phone in your hand and you can pull up all the different apps and you have a million different playlists that you could choose, and there's all this different stuff that you have to decide you have to make some decision about, it would actually be, I think, beneficial to a lot of people if there was only one playlist for them to play, if their gym had no hot tub, no sauna, nothing but the weights for them to lift, right? So when we got there, (laughs) we didn't have to go like, oh, what am I going to do today? Is it machines? Is it pin machines? Or is it plate loaded machines? Or is it free weights? Or is it all bands? Hey, if your gym doesn't have bands or loaded machines, you guess what? You're lifting free weights. 
And yeah. sometimes there's a clarity that, and, and a, a speed that can come from the simplicity that the devices and these fancy gym memberships just don't offer for you. So keep that in mind, maybe if you're struggling with like feeling overwhelmed when it comes to getting activated in the gym, the gym sessions, and this can be also just taking walks around your, your neighborhood or whatever level you're at. If you're struggling to get started, whittle down the number of decisions that you need to make. Oh, wow. We have just one this. playlist that's going to go. And you say, when I press play on this, I'm starting my walk. You know, and that yeah. can really help you. Okay. Let's, let's precursor. I want to just jump right back and, and look, this is something that takes will. Yeah. You have, if you're going to get this complete, do it correctly, you're going to have to work on this. Mm -hmm. This is just like your reps and your sets and your everything. It, it, these are practiced, yeah. mindful things that we've implemented in our lives quite heavily to get us where we're at. These are some of the things that you're going to have to practice too as well. These are harder th for people to do than right. uh, what we're saying. Well, we've kind of active. stumbled upon their importance, right? By by process of trying and failing and discovery and then sharing that content with others, we've kind of determined that these are the things that we suggest. But I think people have a huge advantage if they're starting off with this advice rather yeah. than trying to learn it partway through. It, it's okay for us to say to you that maybe squats and chest presses and dumbbells and barbells are not your first start. Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe your first start for your health is just like you said, you get a certain amount of music for your walk. Mm -hmm. This is your time to walk. And then that is what you do. Yeah. That simple process right there is exactly what we talked about. Our best fitness advice. Yeah. Get active. Just do something. Just get started. My first advice yeah. is just do something. Yeah. That's it. I'll tell people that one of the one of the most pivotal times in my own health and fitness when I shifted from going low workout frequency to re regaining my routine because of course you know I don't know how many people notice this uh, know this but when I was launching my online training I was spending like 20 hours a day at the computer right that's an exaggeration but it, that's what it felt like so I was not working out frequently I had too much other stuff going on and I got a little taste of what quote unquote regular people feel when they're trying to rebuild their routine and the reason I share this is because the thing that was the most helpful for me in that moment was picking one song, this guitar solo that I have on my, on my phone. It's about 15 minutes long. I would go into my workout studio here and I would just do whatever I could, whatever felt right until that song was over. And then I walked out. And so it was just this 15 minutes starting, starting, starting. It was always something I could do. I didn't need to be souped up or well rested or anything. It was just, just do that until the song is over. And that can be a playlist that you're walking until you hear one track, and that's your point to turn around and head home. If that's where yep. you're at to start with, then go ahead and start with that point. Yep. It's okay to start at those low levels. I did the same thing mm -hmm. when I, I took a little hiatus from training. And uh, we, that's a long story, so I won't get into it. It'll, maybe okay. we'll talk about that. Yeah, save as, it. Uh, Another but episode. I did the same thing, too, as I started something very small. Because uh -huh. getting back into it was like, you know, I knew what I was going to be going through. So I knew I had to do that one thing, which was start small. Yeah. And I started with just 100 push-ups a day. Okay. Wow. It, Pretty big for a small start. <laughs> okay. But knowing my, but, I, but I know you know you my mean, background, and I already have yeah. a high level of ability as right. it is. So, but I didn't do them all in a row. I did 10. Break it up. And then yeah. sometime later, 10. And then 10. And then this is how I literally started back up after mm -hmm. that small hiatus. Mm -hmm. I say small, but it was actually a few years. Yeah, a couple, see, a couple and, years. Uh, that can be an a episode of its own, you know, because we can talk yep. about it in detail. But I will tell I will tell the audience in this moment, you know, I know it can feel like a little overwhelming when there's so much stuff to start with. And mm -hmm. I just love this analogy I share with a lot of people. I'll share it right here. When a plane is getting ready to take off, when it's lined up on the runway, that's the moment where they're putting the throttles to probably the highest point in the entire flight. Right. They're going to uh, spin up these engines and all this noise. And then eventually you're creating that lift and taking off. And that's kind of a, a great way to think about the fitness effort. It's at the beginning where we need to be mindful about creating a, a walking route and finding a playlist and filling our gym bag and signing up at a membership and routing our way there. That's all that effort of the plane taking off. And once you get up, then you can get to cruising speed. The throttles are going to come down, quiets out, it smooths out. And we're actually now traveling, right? And so I think it's a great way to think about, like, sure, yeah, yeah, it can be a lot at the start, but that's because the start is the hardest and putting a lot of effort in is how you, how you launch. It's a good one, dude. 
cool. Yeah, good thank one. you. I, yeah. <laughs> if anybody doesn't get that, I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, let's go. Down. Yeah, we'll go to the next one. So, um, actually, I'll tell you what. This goes hand in hand with what we were just talking about. The screens in the gym and those cool. ritzy places with a bunch of TVs on the wall. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, you know, those are the popular places and they're going to get packed. They get really busy they at do. peak times. And I hear this from clients all the time coming in for their workout. I say, hey, how have you been? Fill me in since last week. Did you do that homework assignment workout that we talked about? You know, this is for them to get their second session yeah. directed by us, but not supervised. And we said, no, I wasn't able to do it. Oh, why not? Well, the gym was super busy because instead of seeing you, the trainer, at 9.30 mm-hmm. a.m., I was here at 8.30 doing it on my own, and there was tons of people, and I couldn't figure out how to mm-hmm. X, Y, and Z adjustment. So we hear this derailment a lot. The gym was too full, parking lot, roads were too busy, so I was late. I couldn't make it to the start time. This is the kind of stuff that derails people, and I think that we have some some useful advice for it. So go ahead, DJ. Yeah. Hit it. I'll give my simple piece of advice. Uh I, I created this sort of uh, by accident, this little program called the four by eight. Okay. And it's all it is, is uh, a four by eight mat size. Okay. okay so four, four feet foot by eight, by feet eight foot. Okay. Gotcha. Right. And it's a space that mm-hmm. I'm, con- I'm mis- concerned about here. And what I would do is I go to the gym and I pick a couple apparatuses, mm-hmm. a set of dumbbells, maybe a kettlebell, a band and a stick. Staff, okay. right? Okay, PVC yeah, pipe, yeah, PVC a broomstick, like something for stretching. And it could be a number of different tools or implements if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. But it's just restricted to what you can do on this four by eight piece of land. I like it. Right? And to not be surprised, well, there's thousands of things you can do. Mm-hmm. I've written 21 specific workouts on a f- that, that you can do nice. in a four by eight. Yeah. And so one of the things I find is... Yeah, I've had to work out at times where it's been really full. And you're just like, there's no way I'm getting to that or that or that. The plan you had is yep. not going to work out amongst different machines and, or circuit training. It's, or it, you know it's going to be taken. Yeah. And as soon as you make a move for it, somebody steps right into it. And you're like, well, this is where, well, for you and me, I think it's rather easy. Because we know immediately what I'm going to do right, right next. How to That's audible. not there. Yeah. I know I need to do this type of movement. What other implement can I use? I'm searching, searching, found it, go. Yep. Plus, I know the gym. Easy to make those yeah, adjustments. And I know the gym sure. by the back of my hand. So I know where everything's at. I know where I'm going. I know how far away it is. Mm-hmm. So for us, adjustments quick. Right. But for those where the gym capacity is full and you find yourself a four by eight program with a couple dumbbells, a band, mm-hmm. a staff, PVC pipe, those great workouts can happen in a very small place. Yeah. Therefore, you get a chance to do something good for yourself. And heck, yeah, you may not have made it there on the time mm-hmm. that you wanted to, but having such a compact area with everything there, uh, you just saved yourself a bunch of time, right. and now you can spend more quality time into it. in a small area. Yeah, I've taught all of my clients this idea, mm-hmm. and we do and practice this often, actually. I love this. See, so so basically, to recap, it's we see the derailment of the busy gym yep. and, and the equipment in use and all the reasons why people miss their workout. Yep. And what we've both developed is a, a routine that's in your back pocket. It's resilient to that busyness, to that lack of equipment availability, to that you know f- foot traffic in the space you're working out at. And so what we've really established is like a a floor underneath our training where we're never going to dip below that threshold. If you show up and you're late and the gym is packed and you don't have everything you need, you're still going to get a workout of this certain threshold quality because we know that that's a routine that we need to fill in. That's something we need to have before we really kick off a a big fitness effort. You and me both worked at high peak times in Mm -hmm. our gyms. Mm -hmm. And this was developed during those times when I knew and, and, and it, great, it creates a great little circuit training for, mm-hmm. for your clients, which is fantastic. And they don't have to go very far. And every one of them has loved them because they yep. go, oh, man, you're just, you're just prepared and ready to go. You don't have to worry. And I'm like, mm-hmm. this is what I wanted to build. And it was developed by us having busy times yep. at the gym where yep. we knew we couldn't get to certain pieces yeah. of equipment. So I said, let's alter this. Mm-hmm. And when those things do become open, then we can go play play with those two as well. Yeah, Yeah, a really tidy dumbbell complex where you can get two weights, one in each hand, do these upper body, lower body, pushing, pulling, legs, get some core. Maybe you have a mat on the floor so you can lay down for a few. And 
you know, I create mine to be modular. So if a yeah. person does a 15 minute version or a 20 minute or a 25, it's kind of got these five minute circuits so they can adjust it yeah. to the, uh, the time they have. Yeah. I think that's the critical kind of thing where we say, hey, if this individual is really serious about their health and fitness effort and they want to give it a, a good try, we're going to plan for them to have this workout in their routine. And I might teach it to them on their third session with me so that I say, hey, Susie, if anything happens to your plan and you get these, you know, these challenges, here's exactly what you're going to do. And then we know that we've, we've kind of capped our downside. This is why I build that full library with every client. We teach everything that I can. Mm -hmm. Whatever device that I have available, right. I will show how to do a particular move. You want to know how to do a row? I will teach you with a band, a kettlebell, a dumbbell, a machine, body weight, whatever Standing, tool. Leaning over. Yeah, all yeah. of them. Mm -hmm. And so that option becomes very clear when we're busy and we can't get to the machine that does the row help thing for us. And we go, mm -hmm. well, grab that band right there and we'll do the exact same move, but we'll use the band. Yep. Building that diverse library comes with time. Yeah. So it's okay yeah. if you download some information on your device that gives you a four by eight <laughs> yeah, workout and you around. plop it up and you start watching that and do your workout, that gives you a thumbs up. Yeah. Yep. So, And I think another kind of an undercurrent of what you're saying is that, you know, when we talk variety and we say, hey, dumbbell, barbell, kettlebell, bands, sandbag, and we can do all of those different implements on one single movement pattern. Well, that also means that if you are limited to just one of those, that's okay. Yes. If your apartment complex gym doesn't have any bands and all everything you do is just going to be dumbbells, you can really work on that and you can derive a ton of benefit from that. Yeah. It's not like you need all of those things to make any of the magic happen. That's true. Thank you for bringing yeah. that up. Yeah. It could be absolutely one thing. Yeah. And I think, like I mentioned, that might be simpler because in other countries where they don't have a million different uh, you know, pieces of equipment and sometimes it's just instead... Uh, barrels of, you know, like buckets filled with concrete that have hardened. So the weight, the bar weighs only one weight because it's literally yeah. concrete, right? There's no choice of going up by two and a half pounds or five pounds on each side like we have the luxury of. It's just lift it or don't lift it. That's the choice they have. And so if you're limited to just dumbbells or if your house gym has just uh, one good set of bands like I have hanging here in my studio, that's fine. You can get a great, a great workout with just that, maybe even better because you're not dividing your effort across multiple implements. Gym's full. Actually, there's probably a small space if you look hard enough. Yeah. I challenge you guys to, to use this the next yeah. time you feel like the gym is too full. Yep, and don't get us wrong either. You can have a fantastic workout without any implements. Just your own body weight and the resistance of you against gravity can make for some really challenging workouts. I have three specific workouts for one of my clients who goes to her ho another house mm. and wintertime. Oh, okay. Uh, Travel, so she, snowbird. she travels up there, but we do it, you know, Skype and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I specifically designed those. There's three specific that started off with just body weight movements while she's up there because there was no implements at this place. Mm -hmm. And then eventually we added a couple bands, a couple things, a couple things got it. And now we've yeah. got a couple minutes, but it's, it's like it started with just, hey, you get three different body weight workouts while you're away. Right. Made it so much easier for her. And yeah, by the time she was done, she's sweating and you're like, man, I'm like, yeah, body weight can whoop you. Yeah, definitely. And, and from our main topic today, derailment prevention, we know we are not going to get derailed by equipment if our workout has no equipment. So if you don't need the bands to be available, if you don't, if it doesn't matter if there's a squat rack at the time you go, because all the squat racks are full. That's fine. You're doing body weight and you're doing single leg and you're doing tempo and jump squats. Exactly. You can still get a really challenging workout yeah. without some of those added complexities. I'm so yeah. glad we just covered that, man. Yeah. I guess there's just no excuses. Okay. Yeah. Rule 76. No excuses. That's it, man. Right That's like your tagline. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the website. I just I was, came out it right here. It came out naturally, right? Yeah. <laughs> it should, as it should. I mean, I'm, we're, I should be very proud of what we've done, man. Absolutely. We, we did really good. Yeah. Uh, this one was you. The the people. yeah. Well, I think actually we can do we can do these next two together. So Smack I'm thinking, in. yeah, the the next derailment, and this is going to be a derailment with a little bit of an asterisk, right? A caveat. There, there can be major social derailment. Friends can be there in the gym. They can have you chatting too much. 
derailing you from your your one single workout session right yeah, take a Eating. look at my kids man yeah. check out dude tommy was doing this thing on check it out my videos man and you're like uh, dude i've got to get reps going lift man i'm here for the iron yeah, <laughs> yeah so sorry keep going they're eating up your minutes for that one session and then also there's this idea that you know um when you when people broadcast that they're doing a health and fitness change you know they're changing their nutrition or they're starting to walk or they're going to go to a gym there's inevitably this advice that comes from well-meaning people around them. Sorry, I had to sigh there. I know, I know how you feel, right? It's, I wish I had a button for yeah, the sound effect for this button. because it, it's, well, tell them. I mean, why, why the sigh? Okay, I have a specific client uh, in mind and of a certain age, and it, it doesn't really matter the age, but she's, she's one of my senior clients. Mm -hmm. And she frequently, from her, her peers, Right, they'll they'll say to her, "Are you sure you should be working out this much? And should you be lifting those type of things? And should and these are real comments she's bringing back to me. So they're expressing concern that she might she's, be overdoing yeah, it. overdoing okay. what she's doing. And yeah. while her doctor is agreeing with everything that we're doing together to help says, her, checks out. It, it's, -okay. it, it's magnificent. She's yeah. like, I can't believe you're doing this still. Mm -hmm. And so while her friends who are with the best intention, and I'm not, they're trying to keep her safe, right? But it's like an undercutting. But saying to her, hey, why would you go? Why is it so important? Right. Well, she knows why it's so important. And we have proved why it's so important. Mm -hmm. That she is functioning and doing things on a much higher level at her age. Strength and mobility. That's right. That means she has ability to ability. continue living. That's yeah. correct. And, yeah. and this, friends, right? could be a derailment for some. Like, don't do right. that. You're going to hurt yourself. Well, and, and you shared it with me already, so I know that those friends who are putting comments to, to her workout program and her activity, they are not shining examples of fitness themselves. No. And that's not to be judgmental nope. against them. Again. It's just to point out that there is this tendency in the human psyche when, when a person sees an individual doing something that he or she knows that they themselves should be doing I like this. but aren't doing, they have kind of a tendency to, to nitpick it or to pick it apart, you know? And so yeah. if, if uh, Tommy says, hey, I'm doing this new nutrition plan, I'm going to do this many calories or I'll do this kind of nutrition combo or, or timing of my meals, somebody who's not on a diet plan, uh, any plan at all, they'll say, oh, no, that's not right. You should do this many calories or you should do this combo or you shouldn't do that at all because X, Y, and Z. And it's this strange circumstance where it's like they're offering advice for a useful reason but it's coming from kind of a weird place and it's not always useful. It can actually be a derailment because yeah. these people who you care about or who you respect are now weighing in on your program. They're telling you about how you should eat or what you should do for workouts or more or less like, like your client's friends are. Yeah. But meanwhile, it's not like they're speaking from a place of high experience or personal, you know, personal experience themselves. Yeah, this is true. When people give, well, like if we wrote it down, this advice and they give it incorrectly, mm -hmm. it's usually not based upon their knowledge. Right. It's yeah. it's it's based upon somebody else's knowledge that they probably didn't get received correctly either. Right. I call this like the monkey see, monkey see. A little bit of an unfortunate syndrome. telephone effect where yeah. it doesn't quite get translated correctly when right. they hear it and then spout it off again. Like the good old kettlebell swing. Um, how many times is this swing and movement pattern been done absolutely incorrectly? Yeah. <laughs> it's some of it is so far removed from the actual traditional move of yeah. this pattern. We Pretty. see this sort of lower squat, higher raise yeah. through the mechanics, right? And, we're, and, I, and as a trainer, I go, it's close, mm -hmm. but that information being passed down has been passed down incorrectly by people wanting sure, to modify yeah. it and Kinda change like when it. Kind of you take and that tweak print it. out and make a copy yeah, of it. It's not right? quite as good the second time. And One person goes, No, I'm going to squat a little lower, use my arms a little bit more. I'm going to turn it into a deeper version, higher version. Mm -hmm. And so we get mm -hmm. that morphing, right? Yeah. Well, just because that person is doing it or saying this is a better might not actually be the correct advice to exactly. begin with. Yeah. So. Yeah. Advice incorrectly from people. Actually, we could be culprits too. Oh, yeah, let's get ahead. this. We could be culprits too. Yeah. Right? As as coaches and trainers, we could be giving advice saying, well, these exercises could be better for you not knowing the person's history. I've been I've had this where I've said something to somebody and had to come back and tell them, like, I realize that your circumstance is a little bit more extreme than I thought. The advice that I gave you is probably too much for you. And I feel like maybe we should come back and do this instead. 
So yeah. I've given some incorrect okay. advice first. See, that's and that's good back. to share. Yeah, because I think one thing with with all advice is you know we kind of have this balance between the intent of the giver and then the impact on the receiver. Sure. Right. And so someone can be trying to give you useful advice for your own benefit, um, but it might be wrong advice. Or the other side of this is that they might be giving advice almost more for their own benefit. And I mention that because, again, there's kind of this curiosity of the human psyche where people want confirmation. And if they can have someone else endorse the way that they're eating or moving by also eating or moving that way, it kind of bolsters their themselves. Yeah. And so if I can convert you as, oh, you're trying to do something, you should do what I'm doing. Well, maybe you shouldn't do what I'm doing. Maybe I should do what I'm doing. And your new plan, I should not try to mess with by giving by giving this advice, right? right? So people will try to get you to do what they're doing because it's because it feels good for them to have another, you know, cons- conspirator with them. Yeah, yeah. They're in a different place than you too, by the way. Yeah, right. This may be when you go to the gym with a gym friend mm-hmm. and together, because you mm-hmm. have versus, you know, together versus solo over right. there, right? Right. Can go either way. Yeah. Well, you know, if you're gonna take a gym partner with you, mm-hmm. which I think is excellent advice, right? Accountability buddy. If Both of you on the same page. Mm -hmm. I stopped training with people really early on in my training because Mm -hmm. I realized that people's focus and timing wasn't like mine. Uh, When I went, I went at a specific time every day and made sure I was, you know, doing my thing and I knew what I was gonna do that day. I had it written out. I knew (laughs) like I was I was very into it. Yeah. And if, and if you didn't show up on time or you wanted to do another body part, it threw off the rhythm. Right. And so if you're going to go with somebody, right, sit down with them and make plans together to, to do this and then execute together is a good way to do yeah. this. Yep. But your gym, your gym buddies, let me tell you what, could be your distraction and derailment mm-hmm. from the success you make. Yeah. And if you don't change and they don't change... Well, they're going to be okay with that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But if you want to change and you do, like you said, right. they want to bring you back with them. Yeah. So just remember this. If you're going to go with a buddy, be on the same page. If yep. it's leg day, dang it, it's leg day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know how many guys I train? I mean, they would just, oh, dude, I'm just not just feeling legs today. Just not fi- I'm like, oh, man. Dang it. My yeah. legs are the smallest part of my body. I got to attack these. So mm-hmm. legs was always very important. So, anyway. Well, and you know what? As you're saying that, I think um, working out with spouses or family members, sure. this can become even more poignant where, you know, if we're thinking about derailment prevention, how do you strike that balance between supporting your spouse mm-hmm. but also holding them accountable, which can sometimes be a little bit harsh and a little bit of a hard conversation? And then also, how can you be on the, re- on the receiving side of that? Right. If your spouse was to be trying to motivate you to attend the gym more often, how are you going to respond to that? Are you going to be yeah. taking that as beneficial or, or do you have to work out kind of how I, you're going to respond to that? Because healthy okay. fitness can be very personal, right? It's extremely close to who we are and how you we touch it on a nerve over here, buddy. Yeah. Right. Like <laughs> the, the care that you express for your physical being mm-hmm. by by workout, stretch it, by massage it, sauna it. Yeah, feed it well, rest it well, <laughs> treat it well, right? You know, don't absolutely don't take don't take too much stuff anyway. And if you can think about that and kind of, you know, bring that kind of care into the advice that you give to others, I think you can avoid falling into this negative, the negative side of this. You bring up something that I I think I wasn't thinking of. Oh yeah, uh, I and I think you it, I accidentally you bring up a good point. This um, the couples mm-hmm. that work out together. Right. I, okay, man, I got to be honest about this. And this is where I think people should love this podcast because I'm going to be really honest about this because I don't necessarily, I I just, okay, I don't like working out with my girl. Okay. Sure. Being at the same gym together or a proximity, doing different things, no problem. Okay, so but attending routine, at the same but time. But routine yeah. and exercise together, mm-hmm. I just don't do that. I see. I, yeah. I don't do well with this. Um, and one of the reasons is, well, I'm a trainer. And when I see someone do something incorrectly, 
or I become trainer again. You want to say something. I, and, I, yeah. and, I, and it's not at that point that I should, though. And, and this is what I feel. Because it's not why she's attending the gym with you. Right. It's not to be trained, right? She just wants her own workout. Even though she, might, she would take the advice that I would right. give her, I feel instantly on the spot to say, yeah. oh, I need to help her correct that little move just a little bit more. Yeah. And how's that shift in energy from, and, and, from participant right. to working and watching and fixing? Right. Yeah, so I get that. for the couples, and I'm not want to go into this because I am, I am truly blessed with this woman's physical abilities and, mm-hmm. and, and her drive to, to train herself. Mm-hmm. She does not have to be motivated. Yeah. She is motivated. She doesn't require it. <laughs> she she's got it on her own. Yeah. yeah. I get that. Yeah. That's just why I call her the hummingbird because mm-hmm. she's on the move. Mm-hmm. Zip, 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 zip. She's done. I don't train this way the things she does, so I don't want to train those things like that. Right. You don't want to go rep for rep in that same workout, and it also wouldn't be appropriate for her to try to go rep for rep with what you have written. No. Right. No. Gender differences, training experience, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I get that. So it's not that I don't want to work out with her. Mm-hmm. It's just I just don't want to work out with her. Right. Yeah. So you <laughs> have it with the... Uh, with the experience level of a trainer, I wonder what you think about two regular people working out with, uh, with your spouse. If you're both I you think, know, new to exercise, or I think learning. this is good actually. Yeah, and, okay. and, and, and if, if they're both new to this too, I think it can be a great bonding experience for, for a couple. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we bond in several different ways as human beings, right? And this is an other people's way to bond together as a couple. Yeah, right. And I think it's as a shared challenge, a shared challenge yeah. together because I think you can go through something easier when you're both sort of in misery, right? right. Yeah. That's what they say. Misery, Shared experience. <laughs> misery you know loves company, yeah. except I don't want to use misery. I want to yeah. say... Physical know, discomfort. Yeah, right. Just yeah. flip this over. But the being together and going through something that is difficult to learn, hard to do, time-consuming together, can be a great bonding experience. So that's why, right, the other side of this is yeah. couples can work together mm-hmm. and accomplish something awesome because they're yeah. a team more than they would either one on their, on their own. Right. Yeah. And then some of us like myself, this is this, I can do this on my own and I'm going to, because I'm at that moment focused on my training. Yeah. Yep. If you want advice after we're done, sure. Yeah. But okay. You got to have Fair those enough. lines kind of putting things yep. in two separate buckets. So this one, I think, kind of in recap, it's it's to say that, hey, you know, if we're looking at this from a, a scope of derailment prevention, we can recognize that the individuals who you surround yourself with can either be those derailments or they can be like those guardrails or, or those those uh, bumpers that keep the ball from falling in the gutter when you're bowling. Yeah. Right. Like that can you can bolster yourself with that. And I, I want to point out, you know, really explicitly if you are the type of person who knows that you have the habit of falling off after you try to start something, if you've tried and, and fallen apart before, maybe it's in your best interest. Maybe it's in your best derailment prevention to get ahead of this and say, hey, I want to make sure to build in a few of those bumpers. So who are going to be my people who keep me on the path? And I hope that you would do that for them as well, right? So it can be a mutually beneficial uh, um, friendship between the two of you. But I just want to call out that we can see those people around us. They can be derailers or they can be enablers. And if you are the type of person who needs to to build in your enablers, let's recognize that right from the yeah. beginning because it's just as important as figuring out what group exercise class you want to attend and how you're going to get to the gym. Like it's it's that critical. Are you sure this this podcast is about health and fitness, dude? Because we have talked nothing about losing fat yet. I know, right? Non scale like, results wow, so far, man. Definitely. Like these guys aren't about health. Yeah, well, we're, we're discussing things that don't seem to be discussed a, a lot about, but make yeah. a tremendous impact yeah. from the beginning. These are how we build that foundation of success yeah. is through these learnings right here. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. You know. Yeah. And, one of the questions I ask my online training clients, you know, people I've never met in person, I ask them about their social support. And I say, hey, if, if you learned some new information about health and fitness and you told a few of your friends, what would their reaction be? And this is a multiple choice question. So the answers are prompts, you know, like my friends would think I'm weird. My friends would be interested. My well, friends would, my question, friends would yeah. have told me about it already. Right. Yeah. And, and that's kind of to say, hey, who is in your social network? Is it fit people who are going to be like, 
wow, that's cool that you ran that far. Can I go with you next time? Or is it people who say, wow, you ran that far? That's crazy. Aren't you worried about your feet? Because that's going to be something that can either subtly derail you or significantly help you. you know, and plan that in. Plan that into your workout program. Okay. Time is time is ticking. Yeah. Let's hit this last one. Yeah. Because I think it wraps it all up. And then we'll do that last little bit. Make that quick. Bingo. And I think we're good. This this was a good show right now. I like it. Yeah, I this is this really important guys. stuff. Yeah. Man. So last piece on here, we have kind of our, our thought cloud over there on the board. Uh, the last piece of derailment prevention, I almost hesitate to say it just this way because it sounds kind of obvious and dumb, but <laughs> you know, being prepared, uh, being prepared ahead of time, uh, that is critical. And, and before you just say like, you know, that's a dumb thing to say, we're talking about the little things that can stop a workout yeah. in its tracks or even before it starts. And it's simple as hair ties or small little bandages to cut, you know, to cover a small cut or a, uh, a blister that you have. You know, just, just getting your duffel bag ready so you have a clean pair of workout clothes and after workout clothes in the trunk of your car so that you don't have that excuse of not having clothing. Just getting that stuff ahead at the beginning is is by itself more important than people really give it credit for. Here's the ritual that I go through for snowboarding. Okay. And you're like, whoa, wait, how does this even tie in? Well, we're talking about a go bag. Mm-hmm. Are we not? So that's what we call it in the military, this right. go bag. You have your own term for it. Go to hell. Go to hell. Yeah. So that, so in the military, the go bag is, is everything you need everything to just grab it and that go. you can need for a deployment. Mm-hmm. To the toothbrush, the deodorant, the t-shirts, Big extra bag. belts. It's a large, heavy, cumbersome bag. Yeah. However, you have it. Mm-hmm. So when I go snowboarding every Saturday, right? I go to the I go to the garage. I open up the door. I take my snowboard out. Of, it's it's in its own duffel bag. Mm-hmm. I got my own bag for my board, and I've got my own small bag that carries all my equipment, like my pants, my gloves, my goggles, yada yada. All that warm stuff. All yeah. the things that go on my body are in this one bag, mm-hmm. and so every Friday I pull it out. I bring it inside the house. I set it aside, and I know. That by the time I get to the mountain, that everything I need is going to be in that bag. And why do I know this? Because when I come home from snowboarding, mm-hmm. I take everything off it that is wet. I put it on its dryers. I put everything mm-hmm. in where it needs to get you know, dried Turn out. Turn around and, and right, get it ready. And then everything that needs to be washed. Now I put it all back the very next day. Mm-hmm. So it's already prepared for the next yeah. week. That's a great example of it. Right. And so I know that everything I got is like, I'm not going to miss a thing and get to the mountain and be like, oh man, I forgot. No, I refuse to do that because it's a long drive and it sucks to not have yeah. something on the slopes. You're either out there and you've gone all that way and then you're, you're pinched because you can't do what right. you need to, or you're uncomfortable the whole time. And I think that's a great, it's kind of a great high stakes example of the, the gym, right? right. We've heard people say, oh, I was going to work out, but then I got off work early and I didn't have time to do this and didn't go have back my to shoes. get the clothing and come back. And it's like, dang, man, if you had just put a put your duffel bag together on night zero, the first day of the program is when we, we put that go bag ready so that then we don't have to dedicate thought process to being prepared. We just are prepared, yeah. you know, and we hinted at this a little bit because it's kind of like, again, putting that floor underneath your training where you say like, I'm never going to have a workout that's less good than this good. And we can set that level by deciding to have our gear, have all the stuff. Maybe it's extra headphones. So you never have to avoid, uh, I'm sorry, you never have to listen to the the crummy playlist that your gym chooses. You know, if that's, if that's the kind of thing that's going to make you not work out because you don't have your headphones, then maybe a one-time expense of $200 for a second pair of dedicated AirPods is worth it. Well, for years... Because you're going to work out a lot now. And that's the kind of thing that can take some thought process, but it's a good one to do. For years, I kept two. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Me too. Actually. I kept I two. Uh, yeah, I always kept two, but I yeah. kept... Uh, before they changed the uh, the iPhone, it didn't have the plug-in, right? Oh, yeah. So I kept a pair of the pods, but yeah. I also kept the old plug-in ones. Yeah, yeah. Just because they were cheap, yeah. right? And it's like, if I pinched myself by not charging them the night before, getting, you know what I mean? I'd have one. So mm-hmm. that was my double backup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I just don't miss charging my headphones at all. Right. Yeah. So I don't you can need a double. Change what you work on. Yeah. Right. I've, yeah. I've changed that my thought process is don't take two. Make sure you take care of that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
And then I always say things like this, well, two is one and one is one none. Is none. <laughs> it's That's like, one of my lines, too. Like, uh, well, <laughs> two of everything. Well, no, and I don't think we should have to tell you to take it this far. Right. But have you're going to need to do these habits. This is a habit of every day coming mm-hmm. home and taking off your sweaty clothes right from the gym. And then re- as soon as you're done doing your shower or whatever it is that you do, Go right back to that bag and put the new gear in it. Bingo. These are habits that are going to take yeah. some time to develop. Mm-hmm. We're not just telling you this to say, oh, this is how you're going to fix it. Well, that would be wrong. Yeah. We know that you're going to forget to do this or not do it at all. And right. you'll know we're right when you go to go to the gym. You're like, oh, I don't have my shoes. I'm like, dang, those two dumbbells were right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a habit that we know yeah. is going to be need to be practiced. So why we say all this stuff, we're also saying to you, you're going to need to practice this crap too. Yes, there's a lot to do here, folks, yeah. but guess what? Like you said, that, that airplane, right? All that power at the start. right at the start, takes. as soon as it's up, it starts to pull back, level off, and now it's comfortable, mm-hmm. right? It mm-hmm. will change for you, but I'm sorry yeah. to tell you, it's going to take some of these habit changes. You know, that's a great point. I'm glad you bring that up because it, it does seem like a lot at the start, and it, it is. is with some of these kind of one-time tasks where, you know, you're setting that bag up and you're, you're building out your kit. But eventually it becomes rhythmic. and It's it's, so good. It's actually an important thing because, and I I don't think we've actually ever said this on the podcast, when you have simplified some of these parts of the the health and fitness effort, it leaves you more bandwidth, more battery power for the actual physical challenge of the fitness, right? If you you Uh can just drive to the gym and you know you got everything you want, well, then your mind is thinking about the workout, not about what playlist and what shoes and what... Because you got one pair of shoes, you got one playlist, you got one workout with one implement that you're doing, you know your plan, you're going to actually be able to put more of your effort on that one piece because you're not needing to think about, oh, this part and this part and, oh, remember that. And it just makes things a little easier I know for the long-term success. The, un- the unorganized person is stressed. Bingo. Much more than the organized person. Yeah. yeah. And I'm kind of in you're, – you're a highly, <laughs> highly yeah, structured, organized person. I – I'm kind of somewhere in the middle there. Mm-hmm. I've got some great organization skills, and then some of them it's not so organized, and I'm not as particular. So mm-hmm. I am well organized for certain things, and some things I am not quite as organized. It's okay. Right. You don't have to be as organized as, as Joey. Sure. There is a definitely <laughs> a, a, a happy medium here. Yeah. It's the act of it will help you. And as I go along through my journey here, I am starting to implement some of these more important things like these habits regimented on regimented yeah do the calendar follow the calendar it is free i'm telling you it frees up time Mm -hmm. yeah it really does it shows you what's available and it's like oh okay i know how to maximize time so i'm telling you from a guy who's not all that organized by becoming a little bit more organized it's helped me tremendously yeah and you know what actually that's a really good observation because we've talked about military go bags and and the go to hell bags. And we've kind of made it sound like this is pretty high stakes. But the reality is we're talking about this in this manner because we are wanting to get the highest likelihood for success. So if you can take some of this stuff away and and really treat it seriously and and this is valuable info for you, I think that's a great great kind of power boost, hopefully for everybody who's in the audience. And that's not to make you feel like, oh man, this is even, you know, more intense than I thought. <laughs> it does feel like that right? sometimes. Yeah, sometimes we kind of build it up because we talk for 45 minutes about you oh, know, just one topic, but that's kind of because we get to. And I hope that you've been able to listen this far and take good stuff away from it. But you know, with all of these podcasts, when we're sharing this stuff, it's always with that idea of what's going to be helpful for the listener. We're not up here to just be bragging about what we've learned and what's worked for us before. These are the things that you know we led the show with the things we've heard from people that we've actually seen over the years and years of our career. Yes. We've been in this a really long time. I I just went back and remembering when I got my certifications and I, I freaked out the other day and I realized it's been 10 years. Oh, sweet. Nice anniversary. And I'm like, what? No, 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 no. It hasn't been that long. I'm like, but prior to that, I mean, I've been in the gym since I was 14. So look, I grew, I've grown up in this industry, I see. I have watched it change mm-hmm. and change and change more times than anybody. Like I've, I started so young 
I've seen it change. And so the cycles, yeah. wow, it's been a, and it's been a wonderful journey. So like I, like you were saying, it's like all this time that we have spent into, into training and being in gyms yeah, that's have a good point. given us yeah. the insight to tell you this. Mm-hmm. We're really actually in it every day. Right. We're not celebrities. We're not famous. That's true. We're pretty yeah. much nobody. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't bring our own gyms with us. So to like, this so, point, yeah. yeah, these are real stories that we tell you. These are real events, and this is exactly what we see. And I know a lot of people are whoever's going to listen to this eventually is going to start nodding their head and go, "Yep, yep, they're nice. right. They're just they're Good. right." Yeah, I know it. Yeah, you want to finish out with this one? I'll tell you what, man. Congratulations on ten years. That's great. That's a milestone. And when you say that, it does make me realize that you know, 50 minutes for someone to learn 10 years worth of information. It doesn't, it actually makes it seem like it isn't that long if somebody can listen to this and get that kind of knowledge. So I think that's pretty awesome. And if we do a little recap here, maybe we can close this one out for today. And we'll finish out with the, uh, hit it. Go, go ahead and go ahead and, and then, uh, and then recap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to give a couple of shout outs. I don't think we, we've had, we've done this yet. We haven't, acknowledged some people in our lives and I think it's really important. So I, it, it was something that came up with me today. It ties in perfectly yeah. with today and you oh, just good. mentioned 10 years. You know, what's effectively prevented your derailment from where you were to where you're at today? Yeah, there's been many things that could have derailed me from continuing to where I'm at today. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know. But yeah, well, yeah. Well, they, and they don't know and a lot of them don't yeah. know a lot about us and I don't want to share too deeply here because it's this just takes too much time, sure. but and all this time, yes, there's been some, some things that could have derailed me, but let's give a shout out to somebody who's really important to me, and that is my fiance, Lisa. Let's do it. You know, I don't think people know how important this is in their lives, but I will say this, 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 this woman makes me coffee every morning. Do you know that saves me five minutes? Mm-hmm. She does it willingly, and that's amazing. So by the things that she has done, like make me dinners, you know, go shopping, do these other like things that I don't do. Mm-hmm. She's made my life incredibly easy so I can focus in on the stuff that we're doing here. Right. So yeah. I don't have to think about that. I have another person who's really helping me on another level, another side of this. Mm-hmm. And that really does help me to focus in on where I'm going. So shout out to my lovely hummingbird because she helps me to be what I am today too. Nice. Yeah. It's important. She, she got me into gardening which I think we should have a podcast on Oh, yeah, definitely. Because ours is coming up soon, and we need to – I'll take some pictures on – and you guys can see it on Instagram. It's it can awesome. It can be our first outdoor episode it's with awesome. little mics. Yeah, we, we, we'll, cool. we'll love it. Um, and you, Joey. Thank you. I don't – I don't. I know people may assume, you know, that we've been, uh, you know, doing this forever. We've been, we've been doing this for quite a few years, but – it was because of your inspiration years ago and then when we talked about going online and how silly it sounded and then those videos we started shooting in the gym yeah, and with an iPhone. Yeah, six handheld iPhone or something. 6S. Yeah. <laughs> still available on YouTube if it's you want to check It's still stuff out. on there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hilarious, but yeah. it's still good. It's still yeah. good. And because of you, we're here today. You helped mm-hmm. tremendously on my website, mm-hmm. my logo design. The, the, the podcast, yeah. in every facet so far that we've been together, you have touched and helped me oh, thank you. get to those some of these points that I'm at today. And having some of these revelations that you've brought to me from a different perspective have helped me grow and see this differently as well in beautiful mm-hmm. ways and some sad ways. We've discussed how our industry is, but thank yeah, you right. so much, Joey, for what you've done for me and my family. It has made an impact that could never be repaid in money, but will have to be repaid in in friendship. You know, thank you. I appreciate that. And and you're welcome, you know, because while you say that stuff, you have kind of earned it right back because I I helped other people. I gave advice to other people. I talked about online training with other trainers. I talked about in-person training with other trainers. And uh, a lot of those people have sort of flaked, fallen off or just gone in a different direction. So you know, as much as, as you say, I've been helpful to you, you've also been helpful to me. And I think that that's a, that's really something to recognize, you know, for everybody, because we can be doing that for the audience members, 
we can be doing that for our spouses and vice versa. And of course, doing it for each other as well. And another huge shout out is to every single client that I have ever trained. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. And this is a big deal. And here's why I explain. Yeah. Clap yeah. for them. Clap for them. Yeah. That's important, though. But tell us why. Clients are how I became to gain so much knowledge. Mm. I have had so variable of client abilities and skills and weights and stuff like this over I the see. years yeah. and, and issues and things like that that I've, I've had to learn. Yeah. So much information to help everybody that if it wasn't for having those circumstances that my clients had, I wouldn't be as smart or intelligent about it. But mm -hmm. be, by bringing these things to me and saying, hey, can you, by trusting me. I was just going to say that word. Yeah. By trusting me to do the best thing for them, it put a weight on my shoulders mm -hmm. that made me think I better learn. Right. I better start really show up for them. They're going to put and, down a hundred bucks to be with you for an hour. Let's go make it worth it. Right. For them. Yeah. So shout out to every client that, that has, has Ditto. thrown me a curveball, and has you know, allowed me to help them, man, I'm, I am not where I'm at without them. Definitely. Truly. Yeah. That's so true. You know, they, they're actually really placing their own health and wellness in your hands for a right. few minutes. Cause they're saying, Hey, Tell me what to do and tell me if I'm starting to go too fast and about to slide off the road. And if a coach is not able to do that, then that person could potentially be injured. So it is really trusting uh, for them to put that up to you. And I think it's awesome to recognize that. They put a lot of faith in us. Yeah. And this is, this is something I don't take lightly, dude. Mm -hmm. I'm not, a, I'll say it out loud. I'm not a trainer. Okay, I'm, I'm beyond that idea that I just make you move. It's too narrowing it's of a too word, narrow. right? Because we know right. what an elephant trainer does. Yeah. Walks behind with a sharp <laughs> stick. Yeah, it just keeps yeah, it going. You, That's not yeah, coaching. Usually food motivated, yeah, you know? Right. Or punishment. Or, pa or pain motivated. Kick, carrot yeah. and stick, yeah. Well, we have so neither. So I don't take and have not taken any client lightly. Like what I'm presented, I take very seriously. Right. Because it's important to me that yeah. I give them value for what they're giving me, which is their time and money mm -hmm. more, but more importantly, it's time, right? Some of them can care less about the money they pay me, right? It's that time. And I right. believe in my heart that I owe them every, well, 59 minutes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> 55 minutes, sure, you know, yeah, of that hour are 100% yeah. dedicated to them. And at that time, that's mm -hmm. what I want to be. Yeah. Of course, online training will be different. But it's still the same idea. I want to yeah. give you that as close as I can to that presence yeah. in my online training too as well because you deserve it. Well, and you know, I think about like we can have um, praise for the clients that we enjoy working with who have been really committed and have kind of forced us to, to up our game, you know, for whatever reason. But I also think there's a lot of value from the clients that we have not enjoyed and True. the flakes yep. and the way that we've said, you know, enough is enough with all this schedule rearrangement. Let's figure out a system so we don't have to deal with this anymore. And that's kind of the basis for a lot of the services that are included in both of our online coaching offerings. Yeah. You know, it's meant to say, hey, when people can't make it to the gym, what's the strategy to deal with that? How can we prevent their derailment by having a, a video or an app or whatever we need to kind of support that person? And a lot of those things have grown out of the trials and tribulations of being a professional coach. By being yes. in this industry for a decade, like you mentioned, most trainers wash out. I think it's under three years. It is. We it's see people that are out of the industry, not just changing jobs or changing focus on their field. They're doing something other than fitness coaching. And we've touched on the problems with that, right? The commissions and the hours and the struggle with the, the whole entire industry. But if a person has made it to this point like you have and like I have, it's because we've made it through some of the, the mud and the muck. And we've hopefully found some solutions that will then prevent other people from needing to go through that same slog. It's true. Um, we can't reach them all. Yeah. But sure. we can reach some. And for those of you listening to this um, podcast, just kind of reminder, you know, if, if you think someone needs to hear these things, you know, please share. Yeah. You know, please send this on to something, uh, somebody with the best intentions of, of what we're here for, and that is to help you mm -hmm. um, get to that next stage in your life, whether it be mentally or, you know, 
physically. So yeah, is it recap? Let's hit it, dude. We're we're over on our video again, yeah, so we'll yeah, finish is... off here. I think uh, for this episode, you know, we went pretty long again, close to an hour. So thank you for anyone who's still listening here. We appreciate that. And hopefully this has some real useful advice for you. So derailment prevention, we covered the devices, the people, the gadgets and gear, and kind of the importance of having a plan to start with so that you don't have to deal with the circumstances of fixing emergencies, but instead can just focus on those minor inconveniences and dealing with them straight away. If you're prepared, you don't have to get prepared. Yeah. I know that sounds something like no duh, but this is... This is it, guys. Yeah. Come on. It's important advice, even if you have heard it before. Maybe this can be one more reminder for you to actually take some action towards it action, and make it happen. Action, yeah. action, and not perfect action. Let's break it out. Thank you for yeah. listening to Dumbbells and a Microphone. I'm DJ Moore. I'm Joey Dussel. As always, thank you for listening. Questions, comments, concerns, ideas, suggestions. We want to hear it. Yeah. See you next time. Bye.